Hi, welcome to a video podcast. This counts as uh, number three in our set of videos on the quantum stuff, both particle duality. So I'll just have a really quick recap on what you should know about light. And there really is um, quite a conundrum here, which I won't necessarily get to the bottom of uh, today. We know that if we're, say, talking about uh, the photoelectric effect, would be the classic example, we have to consider the light as it hits the metal surface and um, kicks out electrons, we have to consider it as photons. It's discrete packets of energy, particles, and the energy of the individual particle is given by E equals HF. Uh, we really can't uh, marry that at all with our uh, away view of light. However, you've also seen, um, for example, if we sh shine a beam of laser light onto two slits, then what we see on a screen is a number of bright fringes. These bright fringes are an interference effect, so this central bright fringe here is because that distance is the same as that distance, so we get constructive interference. Here, there's a half wavelength path difference, and we get destructive interference. Real, real big contradiction here. Entirely talking about waves here, not talking about waves here. Uh, been various experiments to try and uh, marry this up and perhaps the best, best thing to say now is the way, way we go about marrying the two is to say that the waves describe the probability of a photon arriving. Um, really quite a big topic. Uh, if you're going to do physics at university, um, you could spend the rest of your life thinking about this. We'll now try and apply that same idea to electrons. Um, now, electrons, uh, we, where, where you've met them so far, for example, in the photoelectric effect, that, yeah, they, again, they've really got a very particle-like character. Um, one photon hits one electron. Electrons have a, a definite mass, and they have a definite charge, and a charge-to-mass ratio. All of that um, counts as particle properties, and, that, and that's something you should know. However, um, Famous uh, physicist uh, De Broglie um, thought, well, maybe if we've got the duality of photons and light waves, does that duality cut the other way? Are there situations where we can consider an electron to behave like a wave? Uh, and the classic experiment, the one that you, you should know about, is that if we take um, an electron tube, um, so I'm just drawing the glass envelope, we need a vacuum inside, uh, a filament as a source of electrons, uh, a nice high voltage um, to accelerate the electrons from here. If we um, let them hit a graphite target, uh, the graphite target has um, very small holes in, and what we see on the screen is a green blob uh, surrounded by uh, a couple of uh, concentric rings. If we change the energy here, uh, the change the speed of the electrons, we change, change the size of those rings. And we now explain those rings by saying this is um, diffraction, a wave effect as the electrons pass through the small gaps in the graphite target here. So now we've got an experiment um, where really the only way to explain uh, the behaviour of the electrons is to say that they're behaving like waves. Uh, there's an equation um, for this. Yeah, the equation uh, that governs this, the de Broglie equation, is lambda, the wavelength that the electrons appear to have, is equal to h, Planck's constant. It's a very small number, 6.63 times 10 to minus 34, divided by the momentum um, of the particle. So remember, momentum is often given the symbol p. So you might see lambda equals h over p. Now, one of the reasons why um, matter, substances around you, the solids you see around you, um, can be considered to have a wave property via this equation, even though that appears um, very nonsensical, is we have to remember that to get a strong wave effect like diffraction, we would want to send um, our waves through a gap um, where the diameter of the gap is of similar size to one wavelength. So if we consider 
uh, and you can do this calculation for yourself, something like a human being, if you divide their momentum, you know, maybe a mass of 80 kilograms, they're running at 5 meters per second run, multiply those two together, divide it into Planck's constant, and what you find is that a running person, to be strongly diffracted, would need to pass through a gap very much smaller than the nucleus of an atom. Now, clearly that's physically impossible, so we live our daily lives um, as waves, but showing no wave property. It still sounds a bit like science friction, but this equation is used every day by people designing consumer electronics. Uh, if you do biology, you might well know that we use um, electron microscopes to resolve small detail. The advantage being that if you want a shorter wavelength, all you've got to do is to um, increase um, your, the momentum of the uh, individual electrons, just turn up the voltage, and you get a smaller wavelength and you can resolve fine detail. Uh, these ideas have been applied to electrons in atoms, and we can explain the um, orbitals of atoms as um, standing waves uh, in these electrons. So, however spooky this um, wave-particle duality may be, it's um, a very well-established theory and used in lots of practical ways. Okay, thank you very much. Bye.